Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to do my prop art. This is like a beginner's belly dance class for the first time. If you're brand new and you've never belly dance before, this is for you, okay? I will offer you options, but let's get started. Let's get started. All right, so week one of 12, belly dance. All right, let's begin. So today's class, because it's our first class, I thought we'd start like really gentle. And if some of you haven't danced or moved for ages because we had a big break over summer. So let's get on with it. So we're gonna do a gentle class today. We're gonna start off with hip circles. So what I want you to do is just soften those knees. Let me get my angle right. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna just soften the knees and we're just gonna initially start with moving our hips from side to side. Just from side to side, okay? Sinking into the floor. Sinking into the floor with your feet. Your knees are nice and soft. And you want to imagine growing from your feet to the crown of your head and growing upwards to the sky. So, week one. And those of you who are coming again for your second round of level one or your third or your fourth, I want you to use this class as your revision of your basics. And if you're brand, brand new and you've not done it before, um, then I would suggest that this class is all about just taking in as much as you can. Every week we'll be doing different moves and different techniques and every week we'll be reviewing what we did today. So if you're completely new, everything's going to be new to you, but if you've been here before, you, you'll be revising it and then next week we'll revise this and you learn one or two more new movements. Okay, so just enjoy the ride. And I want you to go hip to the side wall, hip to the front wall, Hip to the side wall, hip to the back wall. My legs are about shoulder distance apart. We're gonna go side wall, front wall, side wall, back wall, side wall, front wall, side wall. And now with your big hip circle, tracing the edges. All right, imagine you're in a big bowl. You wanna trace the edges of that bowl with your hips. Keeping your chest up, keeping your shoulders down, keeping your neck long. As the weeks progress, I will be going into much more detail about your posture, your energy, all these different things, okay? All right, change direction for me. So you're just working through it. Now what's really important here is you're not trying to keep up with me, you're trying to learn, okay? So if you need to go slower than me in your hip circle, I encourage it. If you want to go faster, go faster. If you're accustomed to this movement, you might want to do some variations. Otherwise, just stay with your hips, making it feel good. The purpose is to warm up, okay? Then we're going to float our arms up above our head. We're going to clasp our hands. We're going to reach to the sky. At the same time, we're going to pull your shoulders downwards. Pull your shoulders downwards. Now, those of you who are new to me, <laughs> I got braces, and sometimes it's really hard to pronounce words. If you hear me stumbling, like s -s -s stuttering, because I have braces in, I have Invisalign, Invisalign braces. Okay, so we're now using the circle to kind of stretch and release through our muscles a little bit. So just enjoy it, and make sure you've got space. You always hear me say this, Space and grace. Keep the space and the grace in your neck. So I don't want you to look like this. I want you to look like this, okay? So keeping that space in your neck. All right, change direction. So we're going to cover lots of basic belly dance moves today or basic belly dance essentials to assist you with your journey as you begin to learn with me. The next thing we're going to work on is going to be our figure of eights. I like to use these movements to warm up with. Okay, so... You first of all, you're gonna have those knees nice and soft. Chest lifted, shoulders down, lengthen your neck. We're gonna twist the hip, twist the hip. If I come closer, what I want you to do is imagine you're bringing your hip towards your belly button, because, because you are, basically. <laughs> yeah, so this hip is gonna rotate inwards towards your belly button. This is gonna rotate inwards towards your belly button, and in, and in. You're gonna keep your chest nice and elevated, and you're trying to keep your shoulders down. Try not to let your chest twist with your hips, okay? You want to try to keep your chest facing forward, shoulders down, and you're just rotating from your hips, rotating. 
So there are many, 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 many different ways of doing any belly dance isolation. You'll start to learn that the more you dance with me, the more you train with me, there are many, many, many ways. So what I'm teaching you today is, your, is like what I consider to be the most basic, the, like the most basic fundamental to get you started. So remember that. Okay, so from here, twist. And then what you're looking for is the sensation of a muscular action underneath your shoulder blade. So like there's my bow, my shoulder blade. Underneath, like cupping it, that's where you want to feel the isolation. So when I bring my hip forward on this side, it's this side, upper back, above my bra strap, wrapping my shoulder blade that I'm feeling a contraction. So you'll know if you're doing it right, because if you don't feel anything in your upper back, you know, chances are, you're doing something like this, okay? You want to keep your chest still. You're only going to feel that isolation if you keep your chest still. You're going to hear me refer to the time of the clock many, many times. So if I was standing in the middle of the clock, 12 o'clock is in front of me, 3 and 9 o'clock to the side of me, 6 o'clock is behind me. So I want you to keep your chest and your chin facing 12 o'clock and then rotate your hips. So you're going to feel all sorts of things happening um, in your back and your back muscles. And so it's like, if you're hearing lots of clicking, cracking, popping, <laughs> it's like going to the chiropractor, when the, you know, when the chiropractor clicks you and cracks you, it's like going to a chiropractor without going to the chiropractor, just using belly dance movement to like realign you almost, right? Okay, so this is not the only way to do a figure of eight, but it's the way I want to teach you today to sort of feel, feel your muscles working. Okay, so... From there, we're going to twist, and now we're just going to do weight shift. So just shift your weight, bring your hips back into the middle, sorry, bring your hips back into the center, and just shift your hips from side to side. Now my legs are straight, my knees are soft, but my legs are straight. Important. Legs are soft, knees are soft, legs are straight. So you don't want them to be locked, you don't want them to be too bent, just nice and soft. And at the moment, what I want you to do is feel Feel the weight transfer from one leg to the other. From one leg to the other, feel the weight transfer. So we're just warming up. We're just warming up. I'm just teaching you. I'm just teaching you a very basic warm up right now. Okay. So we're shifting. So now we're going to turn it into a figure of eight. So now, twist this hip forward. Okay. Keep your chest forward if you can. You're going to shift your hip to the front corner. Okay. Well, this is a figure of eight. There are many types of figure of eights. There are these figure of eights, which you learn in level two, these figure of eights. There's lots of different types of figure of eights. So this is like, this is this one. <laughs> this is this one, okay? So you're gonna twist. You're gonna drive your hip to the front corner of the room. Weight on this leg. You're gonna keep your hip going behind you. So now your hip is facing the back corner of the room, this hip. This hip now is facing the front corner and you want to push the hip towards the front corner. So now the weight is on this leg. I'm going to scoop the hip round the back, round the back, weight on this leg. So now this hip faces the back corner of the room. I cross the figure of eight and I push my hip to the front corner. I take my hip to the back, my hip is facing the back corner. I transfer my weight to this leg, I push this hip forward to the front corner. I take it round the back, so my hip is facing the back corner. Then you want to smooth it out. Okay, so at this point, I encourage you to go your own pace. So I come a little bit closer. Go at your own pace, but you really want to feel and see the figure of eight moving through your hips. If you had pens on your hips pointing at the floor, you'd be drawing a figure of eight on the floor around your feet. At the moment, you can let the chest go. So I just told you to keep your chest still. We'll go over that in a second. But for the moment, you can let your chest go with you. And you're going front corner, back corner, front corner, back corner, front corner, back corner. Yes? Okay. So we're just letting it go. And now your job is just to try to make it feel as nice as you can inside your body. Keep it nice, feeling nice and flowing. Option one, hands out to the side. Option two, hands to your head. Alright, now here's a little thing. This is sunbathing. This belly 
dogs say. Some baby, baby dogs say. Okay? Always a baby dogs, not some baby. So, hands in your hair, ruffle your hair, ruffle your hair. If you've got short hair, doesn't matter, you can just place your hands. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna close your elbows slightly. Not too much. Kind of they face my um, elbows face the corners of the room. Just a guideline to get you shape. You want shape and curves. Shape and curves. Okay? So we're gonna go to our figure of eight again. For this one, see if you can try and get your chest facing forward at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock being here, okay? So my nose, my chin, and my chest is facing 12. It's my waist down that's doing the figure of eight. My waist down. I'm gonna use my hands, it will help you to kind of find the isolation. Flowing, flowing. And now when we release the hands, we're gonna try, let it go, so now you can let your chest go. Less isolated. It's bigger, it's more free, less isolated. Don't forget to keep the figure of eight going. Make sure you've not just turned it into a side to side motion or you're exaggerating one hip more than the other. Make sure you're completing your figure of eight all the way around. Really, really complete it. Really, really complete it. Okay? So I'm really pushing through. Yeah, so hello, everyone, okay? Okay, right, so then you're gonna close your elbows again. Close your hand, close your elbows, and then try to isolate it. This is the one where you're looking for the sensations in your upper back, above your bra strap, around your shoulder blades. Chances are you're gonna feel it loads of other places as well. For four, for three. Right, let's go back to our hip circles. We're gonna place our hands on our chest, and we're gonna go side, front, side, back. to find your own your own speed to go as slow as you like and just make sure you're looking for the sensations to be aware of what's happening inside your body as you move and then you try to become it okay so i want you to become your movement don't just do the movement anyhow okay <laughs> i want you to become the movement change direction for four for three for two let's go into the big figure of eight doesn't matter what hip you start on, just try to keep the hip moving nice and big. Pushing through, softening. Okay, now isolated, a little bit more isolated. So you'll notice when you go isolated and you keep your chest still, that your figure of eight is smaller. Why? Because it's more internal. So it's more muscular, is what I'm saying, right? This is bigger, you have more of a weight transfer happening in the body. I'm shifting my weight a bit more from one side to the other. But when I become more isolated, I'm kind of pretty much stay keeping my figure of eight within this range. My elbows are slightly closed. Shoulders are down, chest is up. No slouching from figure of eight in. Ha, ha. You're gonna hear me say to you often, Grace and space, and that means a really long neck. How do you get that? You've got to press your shoulders down. Chest up, but shoulders down. Four, three, two, one. Okay, we're gonna go into tummy pops. What are tummy pops? It's basically like doing sit-ups with your stomach without doing sit-ups, essentially. So what I want you to do, and it works all of your abdominals, all, your, all of your abdominals, but the main one I want you to think about is uh, your transverse abdominus. Let's change the music in a second. So your transverse abdominus, and think of your transverse abdominus being a corset, a corset, I can't pronounce the word properly because of my braces, but a corset, you know? <laughs> a corset, a corset! Speak properly, damn it. Okay, and it goes all the way around, right? Like a belt, all right? So, look at my belly. It's gonna go in and out, in and out. And I'm imagining that my belly button is gonna to touch my spine. It's going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. Okay, so then, you wanna to try to get your chest lifted and your shoulders down as you do that to create space. You're always trying to create space in your body for your movement, for your breath, for your movement, for your energy, for everything, not just in dance, but in your life, right? So you're squeezing and releasing. Now, what you're not doing is this. <gasps> you're not 
you're not sucking your belly in and you're not pulling your belly in, you're squeezing your belly in. Okay? All right, so I'm squeezing my belly in and then I'm controlling the release. I'm gonna give you some more information in a second, but you're squeezing the belly in and then you're controlling the release. So I want you to imagine your belly is a sponge, a big sponge, <laughs> and you're, when you pull your belly towards your spine, you're squeezing your tummy muscle. I want you to imagine you're squeezing all of the water out of that sponge, okay? And then what's gonna happen is you wanna imagine that you're gonna soak all of the water back up into the sponge. Okay, so I squeeze all of the water out of the sponge and then I soak all of the water back up. Okay, so we're going in and out. Now you want to try to breathe as normally as you can. So here's a bit of advice. If you started doing this, okay, let, let, me, let me backtrack for a second. So you're on the beach and whatever you're into, a hot guy, hot girl, whatever, walk by and you're like, <laughs> and you hold it and they go by and they ignore you, might even, they might even notice you and you go, oh. Yeah, okay? It's a similar concept, right? So you want to, but you're not pulling your belly in, you're squeezing your belly in, and then you're releasing it. But what I don't want you to do is squeeze it in and then just go, Bleh. you don't want to go, squeeze and then, uh, uh. no, don't do that. <laughs> Control it in both directions, okay? So, you're controlling, you're using your muscles to control how, how, how fast you let the belly like, go outwards, right? So I'm squeezing the belly in, squeeze, 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 and it goes on my maximum, and I'm breathing as normally as I can. In a minute you say, Melissa, what, what are you talking about? How can you breathe and do this at the same time? I promise that you can. I'll tell you in a second. So I squeeze in as hard as I can, and then I gradually, I control my release. So if this is my muscles of my belly, I'm squeezing my belly inwards, and then as I release my belly, I'm gradually letting the belly, I'm not letting it go, I'm controlling it out, okay? So squeezing and releasing, squeezing and releasing. Those of you who've been training with me since last term or any previous terms, if you're brand, 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 brand new, please just only do that. Okay, so all of my newbies who've just joined me this term, please, please just, just do that. Um, but anybody else who's been with me for a few terms now, if you would like to challenge yourself, this would be like a level one and a half. This is not a beginner's, this is not a beginner's movement. This is a level one and a half, like almost a level two, where you put your vibration shimmy and you squeeze and you release your belly at the same time. That's more advanced, but that's only for those of you who've been doing my classes for a while. If you know, then, then you can give it a go. Otherwise, if you're brand new, it's your first, first ever time belly dancing with me, I want you just to work on your belly because this is really important. This training is how you get eventually, keep going while I talk to you, please. Unless you've got a stitch, <laughs> you can rest. So this movement is one of, the, one of the movements I do in every class, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced, helps you to find your belly muscles, control them and release them, gives you an internal massage, it's really good for your digestive system and all this other stuff, right? And then, eventually, when you it's, it's a training, so when you get to level two, and I start telling you to do your undulations, you know how to do your undulations, including like to, how to access your belly more, and then if eventually, when you wanna learn how to do belly rolls, if you can't do them already, this movement will help you to find where your muscles are to control them. Okay, enough said. So that's what you're gonna do. Squeezing and you're releasing. Squeezing and releasing. Now the next thing, like, oh my God, I'm sweating. Are you sweating from doing tummy pops? It's normal, <laughs> it's normal. So in my school, we call these tummy pops. Squeezing and releasing, the, squeezing and releasing of the belly. It's like doing sit-ups without having to get on the floor and do all of this, yeah? <laughs> you can do it anywhere. All right, so now, if you're struggling to um, breathe normally at the same time, which I promise you is one of the most, one of the most, the first things you have to overcome when you learn this movement is how to breathe normally. You talk to yourself, right? So for example, say what your name is, what you had for dinner, what you're gonna do later, what you had for breakfast. So I'm squeezing and then releasing. And I'll say, hi, <laughs> my name's Melissa Baydot. Currently I'm teaching a level one beginner's class having loads of fun, and I'm teaching everybody how to do belly pops. You don't have to say as much as that, right? <laughs> you could go, blah, 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 blah. Then we need to take another breath, take another breath. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> why? Because you don't breathe um, in 
really, like, it's not natural to really breathe in as you're talking. You talk on an exhale, right? That's when you run out of air. When people talk really fast and they don't take air, and they're like, <laughs> like that one time at band camp, you know, American Mer American Pie. That that one time at band camp where people just talk for ages without stopping. <laughs> the idea, right? So you try to breathe as normally as you can as you do it. So if you're struggling and you're going, <sighs> then I want you to talk to yourself. So here's the thing, we're gonna dance now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple of hip circles, and then I'm gonna say, bring your legs together, tummy pops. You're gonna go squeezing and releasing. It's not a race. If you've been here before, and only if you've been here before, that's when I'm gonna say, okay, if you wanna go in for a little bit of a more challenge, put your shimmy on top. But as if you're a complete, complete, complete beginner, I would do not definitely recommend that you don't do that. And then we'll do figure of eights. That's what we just learned. And then we'll do the isolated one. And we'll do the bend again. So let's just throw that for a second, okay? So, enjoy this rest. If you've got a stitch, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> it's normal. It will happen, it will happen. You're working your muscles. All right, enough of that song. Why is it on repeat anyway? Let's take it off. Okay, let's go. All right. All right, so guys, all of my music is tribal, tribal from the trap that I'm playing today. Tribal from the trap is my music. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> okay. So let's go. Let's start off with hip circles. Arms are floating out to the side. You'll start to learn the terminology as, as the weeks progress, right? But my hands are like um, slightly in front of me, and I call this position classical position with the arm. So if you hear me say to you, put your hands into the classical position, this is what I mean. Legs together, belly. Squeeze, release. Squeeze. And you don't have to go as fast as me. I want you to do it properly, okay? I want you to do it properly. In and out. In and out. In and chest up. In, out. Breathe. Breathe. Figure of eight. Hands on your hips, pointing to the floor. Doing a figure of eight around your feet. Arms out to the side. So now we're going quite far with it. Weight transfer. And then you're going to bring your hands to your head. chest and head facing forward and you're looking for sensations in your back muscles that you are working through. Belly. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, in, out. And if you need to talk to yourself, say blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's making sure that you disconnect your breath from the isolation. You don't want to connect your breath. It's not like yoga when they say, inhale up, exhale down. It's not the same, okay? You want to try to breathe as normally as you can with your isolations. Try not to connect your breath to your contractions. Okay, relax. Yeah. Okay, so I think you're warm after that, I hope. Yeah, you warm? Cool, okay. So we're gonna go into glutes then. No, 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 vertical circles first and then we're gonna go into glutes because I wanna to work today. Today's our gentle class to get us started. I wanna work on gentle, gentle, soft, soft flowing movements. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna teach you today. Today we're gonna to be doing vertical hip circles on one side and vertical hip circles on the other side. So today's movements are all soft movements, soft and flowy movements. And there are lots of sharp movements that you're going to learn at some point in the course. But for today, we're just gonna get started gentle with the soft movements. They're a little bit easier to do and a little bit easier to get your head around. So, here we go. First things first. I want you, for this one, I want your legs wider than your shoulders. Just a tad, not too much, okay? And then you're gonna do a weight shift. The weight shift is vital to the move. So I keep my heels flat on the floor. Keyword, pay attention. Flat on the floor. My heels are flat on the floor. And what am I doing? Can you notice? I'm going towards a bent leg. I'm going towards a bent leg. Towards a bent leg, towards a bent leg. And the bent leg is where my weight is. The bent leg is where my weight is. Quite important 
for you to feel that weight shift. Otherwise, when we start the circle in a second, you're gonna get real stuck, okay? So I'm going from one side to the other, from one side to the other. Okay, so the next exercise we're gonna do is, she's gonna feel like a complete and utter contradiction. Just trust me. <laughs> Just trust me, okay? So what we're gonna do first, is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you from this angle, we're gonna weight shift to this leg. So this is the bent leg, and this is the straight leg. And from here, you're gonna raise this heel off the floor. And just do that a few times for me. Your heel's gonna go up and down. You're like, but Melissa, my weight's on that leg. Yes, y yes it is. <laughs> uh, that's what's gonna feel weird, because your weight is on this leg. There's no weight on this leg. All of the weight's on this leg. And I'm asking you to raise your heel up and down. So okay, well if you're, then you're saying, well if my weight's on this leg, how can I lift my heel up? Well, because you want to put the weight into the ball of the foot, not the heel, okay? When you start raising your heel, so I shift my weight to this leg, now I'm gonna put the weight into the ball of my foot. If the weight's in the ball of my foot, I can lift my heel up and down, like so. Okay, now, now we're gonna connect our hip, our hip to our heel, okay? So, shift, I bend. I sink into the floor, I'm gonna raise my heel. Now look, look, just look for one. So when I lift my heel, I'm also gonna push my hip up, I'm gonna do a hip lift. I'm gonna put my heel and my hip down as one unit, I'm gonna bring my heel up and my hip up at the same time as one unit. So now they're the same thing, okay? So heel and hip up, heel and hip down. I don't want you to go heel and then hip, heel and then hip, that you could, that would be an isolation combination. But for the move that I'm teaching you, you have to do it at the same time or you're gonna get stuck. So. Your weight is on this leg, isn't it? Isn't it? Check, 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 okay? So I raise my heel and I raise my hip at the same time. So in this course, you're gonna to learn tons and tons about your muscles and how to use them and how to dance with them. <laughs> thank you so much, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you're gonna learn so much about your muscles and how to use them because belly dance essentially is your body and its movement, and then how are you moving? Well, you're moving your muscles. So when you understand what muscles to use, when, where, and how, that's when you're gonna get the best out of your body and the best benefits, health benefits of the movement, as well as it just looking really beautiful. Okay, so, you're oblique. Can everybody do this for me? Your waistline, wherever your waistline is, can you just give it a firm poke? Like, like, like your, your oblique is gonna eat your belly, eat your finger, sorry, okay? Like this, poke it. I'm gonna do the same exercise, and I want you to feel how this muscle contracts to lift your hip up, okay? It's really important. When you start to understand these things, you know how to get the best out of your body and your movement, right? So you weight shift. I weight shift to this leg. I raise my heel. At the same time, I'm gonna push my hip up. And you should feel something happening around your finger if you're, if you're poking the right place, right? In the middle of your waistline. Then bring the heel and the hip down, and you'll notice the muscle kind of stretches and do it again. Push the heel and the hip up, this muscle's gonna contract, okay? So my heel and my hip goes down, this muscle kind of like expands like this, okay? And then when I poke this in, and I bring my hip back up, my heel and my hip goes up, you notice, look, I'm getting even getting a crease. That crease is because my muscles are really, are really strong now, <laughs> so I'm gonna get a really good crease across here. So no matter how toned you are, or how, how soft you are, it doesn't matter, you're gonna, you're gonna get that, so look for it, okay? So it goes up and down, up and down. So work out, huh? I said today was gonna be a gentle class, but you're probably sweating. Okay, all right, so other side, why? Because you're dancing from the inside out and what I teach you is very important to me is to teach you how to dance from the inside out. Your movement is from within. When you do that, no matter how slowly you move, you're gonna generate heat because you're moving, you're, you're, you're getting things moving. It's energetic, right? Okay, anyway, so on this side now. So I'm gonna shift my weight to this leg and I'm gonna keep our weight on this leg. What did I say? Where does your weight need to be? Five, four, three, two, one. If you're setting the board of your foot, well done you, bravo, because that means you can lift your heel up and down. If your weight isn't in the ball of the foot, forget it. Forget it, right? So up and down. Now at the same time, remember, what are you gonna do at the same time as raise your heel? Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, 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 you are. You're gonna lift your hip up, so your hip and your heel is gonna go at the same time, yeah? Heel down, hip down. Heel up, hip up. Heel down, hip down. Heel up, hip up. Keep going, come and have a look. So, keep it going for me. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So you want to raise your heel up and your hip up, squeeze. And then if you're finding it helpful already, get your finger into the middle of your waistline and then get that muscle to kind of eat your finger when you push the hip up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Up and down, up and down. So after in the chat as well, when we finish class, after in the chat, you can always drop me, um, if, you're in your, if you're in the WhatsApp group, then you hit, hit me up and you can have ask questions and stuff. I'll also be posting stuff about this class in there. So you'll see how it goes, okay? All right, so up and down, up and down. Keep that going for me. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Are we still there? Are we still there? We should still be here, okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Okay, up and down. All right, so now we got that principle, all right? So what we're gonna try to do now is we're gonna try to keep it, we're gonna turn it into, sorry, the one side circle. So now we know about this muscle, now we know that we're trying to put the weight on one leg, now we know we're trying to get the heel up and the hip up at the same time. So that's your fundamentals already, that's a lot, right? You look at this move and you say, oh, you're like, oh, that looks easy. And maybe it does look easy, maybe you find it easy, but we've already discussed a lot of very key technical aspects that help you to achieve it, okay? So, here we go. So. This is the thing, we're gonna initially make a square. I'm gonna to shift to the side. There's my weight, no weight on this leg. I shift to the side. Now I'm gonna raise my heel and raise my hip. Boom, yeah, okay? And now I need to push my weight, push from the ball of the foot and push myself to that side. Look what happened, this leg bent. This leg became straight. Now, all of the weight's on this side. So I'm gonna put my heel down and my hip down. You won't really see the hip drop because of your position, but you're putting it down. You're gonna slide again. Weight shift, guess what? There's the bent leg, there's the straight leg, this is where your weight is. You're gonna raise your heel, raise your hip, contracting your oblique. You're gonna push through the ball of the foot and you're gonna send your energy to the side wall. And then down, so here's your square, it's going side wall, you're gonna hip lift, you're gonna this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. This way, this way, and now you're gonna connect it and make a circle. So turn it from a square into a circle. If I had a pen on my hip, I'm coming closer. If I had a pen on my hip, I'm drawing a circle on the screen like this, okay? So making a circular motion. Try not to twist. Some of you are gonna to wanna to kind of do something like this, which to be fair, you could do, but what I'm teaching you is I want you to learn how to access your body and make specific shapes. So I really want you to try your best to keep your hips facing forward. Imagine you've got headlights of a car, car headlights on both hips. I want the beams of the lights to face forward the whole time, the whole time. Don't let the, don't let the beams like, no, <laughs> okay? Keep it over. Okay, getting hot yet? You say, Melissa, I'm, I was hot ages ago. I was hot ages ago. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I'm gonna face the back and give you a demonstration from the back, follow along with me. If you're exhausted, you can take a little rest. Otherwise, we're gonna, because we're gonna do the other leg in a second. So from here, I weight shift. Now this heel, remember the opposite heel stays flat on the floor the whole time. Do not raise it, do not raise it. It's gonna mess you up. So I go side wall, my weight's on this leg, in the ball of the foot. I raise my heel and my hip. I contract in the middle of my waist. I go to the side. My weight is on this leg. Put my heel down, I go again. Weight shift, heel up, hip up, contracting your oblique, middle of your waist, push it across, put it down. And then you're gonna connect that circle like so, boom. And the more you use your muscles, the more shape you're gonna get, okay? So the more you use your muscles, the more shape you're going to get, boom. Boom. Okay, so now you understand the basics. Let's put some music on, and we're gonna do it on the other leg immediately, okay? So go as slow as you like. You do not have to go fast, okay? I find it useful when I think about this move, I find it useful to try to, to imagine I'm the ocean, and I'm making a big ocean wave in my hips, with my bed, with my, with my hips and my legs. Okay, so let's go. Other leg then. So now this foot is going to stay flat on the floor the whole time. 
This one is the one that's gonna go up and down because we're working on this hip. All right, so weight shift. Hold, 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 hold. Heel up, hip up, contract. Push yourself to that side wall. Push it as far as you'll go, put your heel down. Go again. I go towards a bent leg. I raise my heel and my hip. I push myself to that side wall. I put my heel and my hip down. I go side wall, heel and hip up. Side wall, heel and hip down. And off we go. Big vertical circle, like so. Up and over, down and in. This heel stays flat on the floor, don't raise it. Okay, push. circles, horizontal figure of eights, and horizontal circles, which is all the moves we've done so far. Okay, so let's try it. Okay, I want to have a look at you in a second, okay, so let's, let's see how it goes. Alright, so, bend, we're going to start with our legs about shoulder distance apart. For the moment, let's bring our hands here and do our hip circle. Hip circles, good. Now where's your shoulders? Bring them down away from your ears, down away from your ears. Super long neck, space and grace. Change direction. This time we put our hands on our chest. Four, three, two. Let's go into our figure of eight, nice and big, the big one. And just letting our arms float with us. You will learn arms later in the course, okay? You will learn arms later. For now, today is lesson one. It's lesson one. It's week one of 12. So we're just trying our best just to understand the most basic fundamental concepts for today. Or if you've been here before, you're trying to revise the most basic concepts. Okay? And you're going around. Now you're making your figure of eight. So this is the isolated one, where it's smaller, it's deeper inside the body. It's more muscular. Four, three. Let's go into our vertical circle on this side. We're gonna get you to put this hand on this hip, keep this hand on your head, close the elbow slightly, side wall, up and over, down and under. Side, up and over, down and under. Get wavy, so one of my favorite things to say with these type of movements is get wavy, wavy like the ocean. Push. Push. Make it a circle, remember? Heel up and hip up, heel down, hip down. Heel up and hip up, keep the opposite heel flat on the floor. Okay, let's change legs. Go through circles first. For four, for three, for two, for one. And we're gonna go to the other side. So, one hand on your hip, one hand on your head. Off we go, pushing over and under. This, keep this heel flat on the floor. Make sure you're raising your heel and your hip up at the same time. Keep going for me, it's gonna come and have a little look. Okay, yeah, okay. All right, so take your legs a little bit, a tiny bit wider. So look, you want your legs to be a little bit wider than your shoulders. It gives you a wider base to move from one side to the other. If your legs are too narrow, you can do it because it is a variation, but for today, I want you to be able to explore your full, your full range of movement, essentially, okay? That's it, yeah, keep going. And now drop your shoulders a little bit more. Hold on down more, good, yeah, that's right. And then look, imagine your neck is like the stalk of a flower or the stalk of a plant. You want your head to reach towards the sun. Reach towards the sun. So you're trying to create as much space in your body as possible. Yeah, there you go. So, creating space. We need space in the body for many reasons, as well as organ functionality and breath and energy and all sorts of stuff. You'll learn that as the weeks progress. Okay, for now, today's the first lesson. <laughs> the first lesson. So I just want to, I don't want to... I don't want to give you too much critique today. Today I just want you to get into it, okay? As weeks progress, I will give you more and more feedback, more and more advice individually as well to really direct you in the right way. Today is brand new, so we're just, we're just dancing. We're just dancing, okay? Push. 
push, push, yeah, all right, tummy pops, squeeze, release, squeeze, now remember, if you're struggling to breathe normally, bring it up, you're going to talk to yourself, blah, 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 you say, blah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, blah 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 blah. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. For four, three, two, and again, if you've been, and only if you've been here before, you know who you are. I've got my eyes on you. I've got my eyes on you. <laughs> if you'd like to, you can put your shimmy on top. Squeezing and releasing. You haven't learned shimmies with me yet, if you're, if you're brand new, we haven't learned them today, you're going to learn them, okay? You're going to learn them. And there are lots of different types of shimmies. Lots and lots. For four, three, two, one. <laughs> Have a little stretch. So whenever I say to you stretch, I always prefer to do roll downs. What's a roll down? So I have my knees nice and soft, I tuck my chin in, and I roll down one vertebrae at a time just to release any tension that may have built up in the body, in the back of the legs. But if you know what stretch you need, just do it. So for example, if you're like, oh my God, my neck is really tight, then you can go. Whenever I say stretch, pick the stretch that's appropriate for you. If in doubt, you do a roll down. We're getting the back of the legs and really rounding the back to release any tension. Because you're learning, and often when you're first learning something, we put, we put too much effort in, like more effort than we need, and so then we get quite tense and quite tight. It's normal, it's part of the process of learning, and then you figure out how to use less effort to get better results, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so that is the idea, right? And that's with movement in general. And then you'll see very quickly, all the things I teach you um, in, 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 in my classes, all the things you're gonna learn with me are directly relatable to your life, okay? You can, you can literally, as far as I'm concerned, dance is life, life is dance, they're the same, they're not separate. It's not like, oh, now I'm gonna go do my baby dance class with Melissa and it's separate from the rest of your day or the rest of your week or the rest of your year or your life, it's not. The things you learn in here are exactly what you're gonna be directly applicable to you the second you log off. Okay, so remember that. <laughs> okay, all right, what are we gonna do? <gasps> We're running out of time real quick. Okay, so let's have a little combination. Let's do a combination. I really wanted to talk to you about glutes, your bum cheeks, because your bum cheeks are really, really, really important, but let's save them for next week when we do some more, when I teach you some sharper movements where we're gonna use our glutes more. So we'll save those for next week, okay? Let's stay with the soft, calm stuff. You're probably already really sweaty from that. <laughs> so let's leave it like that. Okay, so we can do. Let me just talk to myself for a second. Shoulder rolls and shoulder rolls. Snake arms and snake arms. Figure of eights. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's have some nice music. <laughs> oh, you're all very welcome. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Okay, so here we go. Let's get into, just follow me. So we, we've got about 10 minutes left um, to finish class. But I want to do a little combination with you to finish it, to finish off with. All right, here we go. Well, let's use this one. All right, first things first, let's just do, let's do the arms first. Shoulder roll, so your shoulder's gonna go forward, up, back and down, so we're making a, a shoulder circle, a shoulder roll, okay? Roll it through, all the way through. All right, then we're gonna try the other side. Well, as you do it, I don't want you to be doing this, losing your neck. You're not trying to go as high as you can, you're trying to keep the space, so you're actually your shoulder roll is actually really inside your socket, okay? So keep going for me while I explain. This is your socket, your shoulder socket, and this is the head of your forearm, your, I'm um, sorry, upper arm in the socket, and you're doing the movement, it's like that, it's inside the socket. So it's really small, in, inside the socket. You're not trying to go outside the socket, which looks something like this, yeah? Because we're not trying to use all of these muscles at the same time. We only want to use the little, little ones, okay? So roll it. Rolling. Okay, we're gonna do nice and slow. You're gonna go 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Snake arm, shoulder, elbow, wrist. Now snake arms are actually really detailed. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot that goes into snake arms. But again, over the weeks I'll teach you, I'll teach you how to do these properly. But today, just want to think of like a waving motion in your arm. Starts actually in your upper back, not your shoulder, but for today, think shoulder, elbow, wrist, caress the air, and then the other side, shoulder, elbow, wrist. Don't worry what you look like today, because chances are when you first learn your snake arms, doing something like this, or it's all spiky and twisted and like too much is normal, but over time you're going to learn how to relax it and make it more subtle. Okay? Shoulder, elbow, wrist, that's it. Don't worry today. Over the weeks, I'll teach you exactly how to do this in more detail, okay? But today, just try your best. Try to copy, just try to mimic today. But over the weeks, I'll teach you how to do this properly, okay? Okay, so you're gonna go. Shoulder roll one, shoulder roll two. Snake arm three, snake arm four. We're gonna bring our arms out to the side, slightly in front of you. So not to the side, definitely not behind you, but slightly in front of you. And then you're gonna roll the wrists, wrist circles. So my fingers are going out, they're coming in. Out to in, out to in. And as you do that, again, I'll break this down for you much more over the weeks. Today, we've only got a few minutes left, so I just wanna throw something at you for the end of class. You're gonna bring your hands gradually inwards to your chest, okay? So you're gonna go, shoulder roll, shoulder roll. Snake arm, snake arm. Wrist circles, wrist circles, wrist circles. Ah! Body is gonna go. Shoulder roll, say it in your head. Shoulder roll, shoulder roll. S figure of eight, snake arm, snake arm. Wrist circles, wrist circles, wrist circles, wrist circles. Side to side, shoulder roll, shoulder roll. Actually, make it, let's make it the same. Snake arm, snake arm. The wrist circles turn into a figure of eight. Figure of eight, figure of eight. And then when your hands on your chest, vertical circle, vertical circle. So now we're trying to coordinate hands and hips. Ah! And trust me, when you're first learning belly dance and you try to put the arms at the same time, it's like this. No. <laughs> okay, let's try it real slow. Shoulder roll, sway side shoulder roll, snake arm, snake arm. Figure of eight, wrist circles, gradually bringing your wrist in towards your chest. Side camel, it's called a side camel, vertical circle. Two, three, and now we're gonna shift the weight, change sides. One, two, three. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Shoulder roll, one. Okay, let's put the music up. Feel free to go as slow as you like. If you want to go slower than me, I like to use it as a memory game. So I dare you to see if you can turn away from the screen, try not to look at me, and see if you can do the whole sequence all the way through. Test your memory, okay? You can do one more with me, and then when I say turn around, turn around and see if you, see if you remember what to do. Okay, ready? Thank you. 
which is a scale. Five, six, seven, hey! Don't worry if your timing isn't the same as mine. Just see if you can get all the way through the sequence. It's like doing sit-ups without doing without doing sit-ups, okay? Same effect. You have to have got to lie down. You can do it at work, you're on the bus, you do it walking down the street, when you're doing your shopping. So, let's do go a little bit faster now. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Belly in, belly out, belly in. Where's your chest? Where's your chest? Get it up. Squeeze, release. Before we wrap it up, I want you to see you've got two options. Option one, you're just gonna stay on the spot and focus on doing your belly contractions, okay? Option two, if you wanna like, mess your head up a little bit, you're gonna go for a walk in your space. Doesn't matter how small your space is, you can walk around yourself in a circle if you like. Okay, what I want you to do is see if you can keep walking whilst you're doing your tummy. So you can walk forwards, Keep your tummy going, <laughs> and then you can go backwards. Keep your tummy going, okay? Or you can just walk random, random in your space. And you're trying to keep the tummy going the whole time. Now, some of you be like, oh my, Melissa, why do I feel it here? Why do I feel it here? Well, if you remember at the beginning of class, I told you one of the main, we're working many muscles, but one of the main muscles is like a belt, like a corset, and it goes all the way around. So. If this was my belly, my belly, if it was my belly, what I would do is as my belly squeezes, if my spine is in the middle, belly's going around like this, so it's all of it, it's going like this, at the front, at the side, and at the back, yeah? So when you do enough of them, you, you will feel it here as well, because the muscle goes all the way around, okay? Should we try it? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So option one, just totally stay on the spot. On the spot and do it. An option two, try walking around. You're so welcome. You're very, very welcome. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, please. Your speed is up to you. You can go slow or as fast as you like. Okay, let's relax. So, to clarify today, 
you can just rest or you can follow me through and do a very brief little revision about what we went over today. Let's change the music for a second. All right. So next week, we will, of course, go over more. We'll recap what we did today. And we'll add, we'll learn a couple of other new movements. Next week, I want us to go, like I said, to work on our glutes and sharp movements. How to do sharp movements using your muscles. We're going to learn that next week. But we'll also revise this. So, today, we learn belly pops. Okay? In, in our school, in my school, we call these belly pops. Squeezing and releasing the belly. We learn hip circles. Clockwise and anti-clockwise. There are many types of hip circles. Many, many. We learn figure of eight, the big, big and free and flowing. We learn the isolated figure of eight, which is where you try to keep your head and your chest facing 12 o'clock. We learn vertical hip circle in order to technical breakdowns, making a wave like the ocean. Yeah. I like to do my hands like this for this one personally. So the other side, we, we did the other side. Yay! We did a little combination. We did shoulder rolls. We did snake arm. We did figure of eight with the wrist circles, bringing the hands closer in. And then we went into our circles. You learn a lot in one lesson, that's a lot. So next week we'll revise it, yeah? And we'll revise it, and then we'll also add on. We'll learn some other stuff. Okay, let's have a little stretch. So legs nice and wide. If you've got your own stretches that you'd rather do, go for it. Go for it. Otherwise, follow me. I want to root this foot into the floor, but reach that way. Keep my shoulders down so I've got space. And your goal is to get a nice stretch down the side. For four, three, Two, bring your arm underneath, please, underneath. Let's change sides, you're gonna reach up and over. Okay, pull the shoulder down, long neck, space and grace. Root this leg and this foot into the floor, get a better stretch. For four, three, two, bring the arm underneath. Okay. <laughs> okay, get your hand. Uh, you guys as well, get your hand. <laughs> And you're gonna high five me. Come on, don't leave me hanging. High five me. High five. Boom. And you're the other one. Boom. High five. <laughs> okay. Take this hand. Give yourself a pat on the back. Woo -hoo! Say yay. Well done. Well done for all our hard work today. <laughs> okay, so guys. Join the what if you haven't already join the WhatsApp group for this class, okay? And then I'll be sending you music and class updates and all the information you need. And you can ask questions for it there throughout. That's where I'll be posting homework if you want homework. You don't have to have homework, but I know some people love homework, so I'll give you your homework options in that chat as well. For your online classes, access to, to catch the recording. If you don't know how to do that, message me directly and I'll tell you where to find these recordings so that you can watch these classes if you wish. It's great because if you miss a class then you can totally just like watch it you can watch the recording afterwards if you want you don't have to because we, we we recap every week anyway but if you want to get extra practice in or you miss a class you want to see what what, we, what you miss you get to do that what else oh my god loads of stuff loads of stuff we're also probably going to get into using a bit of this um this time as well which is your this is called a Sti a mini stability ball. You don't have to have one, but it's gonna be really good for our training. We're gonna do a lot of um, dance, belly dance based exercise training with this. You don't have to have it, you can do it without, but with it, it's significantly more effective. So if you want me to send me, you can WhatsApp me, and I'll send you the link of like where to get this from. But basically, you can just Google mini stability ball, right? Then you do, we do loads of exercises with it. And there are like, I'm in England, and this cost me like about, I think like five or eight pounds or something like that. So just do a Google search for it. Yeah, anyway, it's not compulsory, but it will like, it's much more, it's actually much more fun with this. It's like, when you do rhythm gymnastics, when you do it, like like people just do rhythm gymnastics. <laughs> I don't do rhythm gymnastics, I'm just saying. If I did, I'd have the ball, and it'd be like something like this. When you're dancing with it, and you want to do some belly dance movements with it, it's really fun, because you kind of feel like you're being really artistic. <laughs> anyway, anyway, 
anyway, anyway, anyway, anyway. Thank you so much. Questions, message me. I've got to run because I've got another class now to teach, so I've got to run. But um, you hit me up on, on WhatsApp if you've got any questions, yeah? You good? Yeah, awesome. Well done for your first class. And I'll see you later. Bye.